Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday the 16th of May. US rolls out red carpet for PM Modi for his first state visit. Pakistan's ruling alliance accuses Chief Justice of Imran bias, demands resignation. And Sri Lankan economic reforms critical, says IMF. And now for all the details. The United States has called India as one of the most consequential partners and said Prime Minister Narendra Modi's first state visit in June provides an opportunity to enhance trade and security ties. U.S. President Joe Biden has been eager to strengthen relations with India as part of his bid to win what he has framed as a contest between free and autocratic societies, especially China. During a February visit by India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, both the sides launched a partnership to deepen ties on military equipment, semiconductors and artificial intelligence. PM Modi's visit also comes in the backdrop of Washington expressing objection over India's close ties with Russia and increasing purchases of Russian crude oil, a key source of funding for the war in Ukraine. And India on Tuesday slammed the UN Special Rapporteur on Minority Issues, Fernande Varanis, over his comments on the G20 meet in Srinagar, calling it an attempt to politicize the event. Varanis, in a statement claimed by holding the G20 meeting in Kashmir later this month, the Indian government is seeking an international seal of approval amid minority rights violations in the region. The Indian mission in Geneva, in response, termed his allegations as baseless, unwarranted, presumptive and prejudiced. Locals have welcomed the crucial G20 meeting, calling it a historic event and expect it will significantly boost the territory's tourism sector. है सत्तर सालों के बाद मुझे लगता है बीस मुल्कों के एक यहाँ पे प्रोग्राम हो रहा है और प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने एक चीज ये रखा है मतलब कश्मीर को ये कितना मतलब देते हैं और बोलते हैं नहीं भाई कश्मीर को ही हम आगे ले जाते हैं ये जम्मू में भी हो सकता है बेंगलोर में भी हो सकता है उन्होंने कश्मीर में क्यों चुना क्योंकि वो चाहते हैं कश्मीर डेवलपमेंट डेवलप हो जाए और डेवलपमेंट आगे चले और बाहरी मुल्कों के जो लोग हैं वो यहाँ पे आए इससे बहुत फायदा हमें मिलेगा well, Pakistan's National Assembly has passed a resolution to set up a five-member committee to prepare and file cases against Chief Justice of Pakistan, Umar Atta Bandial, accusing him of biases for former PM Imran Khan. The ruling multi-party alliance, Pakistan Democratic Movement leaders also organized a sit-in outside the top court and lashed out at the judiciary for granting bail to Khan in a graft case. They said they will not accept engineered verdicts. The protesters also demanded resignation from the Chief Justice, calling him facilitator of Imran Khan. Meanwhile, PDI Chief Imran Khan has claimed the arson during protest following his arrest was done by country's agencies in order to justify the crackdown on his party workers. Khan has demanded an independent inquiry and said he has enough evidence to prove his claim. And the International Monetary Fund, IMF, mission in Sri Lanka will evaluate progress made on reforms so far and complete an exercise to improve governance in key areas of the economy, a senior official said on Monday. The IMF team is in Colombo until May 23rd as part of consultations ahead of the first review mission later this year. The island nation has received $2.9 billion bailout money from the global lender after it defaulted on its foreign debt last April. Senior IMF official Krishna Srinivasan has said the global lender is encouraging the local authorities to come up with a strategy to bring down high domestic interest rates. The IMF currently expects the Sri Lankan economy to contract by 3% in 2023 given the weak external environment and domestic policy tightening before registering a modest growth of 1.5% in 2024. Commendably, Sri Lanka has already started implementing many of the challenging policy action in these areas. It is now essential to continue the reform momentum under strong ownership by the authorities and the Sri Lankan people more broadly. Economic impact of the reforms on the poor and vulnerable needs to be mitigated with appropriate measures. 
Former Deputy Prime Minister and CPNUML leader Tok Bahadur Rayamaji was on Monday sent to three days judicial custody after he was arrested in the fake refugee scam. Rayamaji was on the run for 11 days and was arrested on Sunday from outskirts of Kathmandu where he had taken shelter in a relative's house. The fake Bhutanese refugee scam has become one of the high-profile scandals of the Himalayan nation. So far, police have arrested 13 people including former Home Minister Bal Krishna Khand. At least 106 complainants have accused the arrested individuals for promising to send them to the United States as Bhutanese refugees in return of money. Investigations have revealed millions of rupees have been swindled from the victims. And residents in parts of southern Bangladesh cleaned up debris and repaired their homes after Cyclone Mocha left a trail of destruction over the weekend. While no casualties have been reported so far in Bangladesh, at least three people lost their lives in Myanmar. Local residents in Shahapuri Dweep in southern Bangladesh began to clean up debris and repair their damaged homes on Monday, a day after Cyclone Mocha made landfall, leaving a trail of destruction. Tens of thousands of people have been evacuated, although there have so far been no reports of casualties. In neighboring Myanmar, however, at least three people were killed since Mocha hit its western region, state-run media reported. While most of his family and neighbors took refuge in a storm shelter, Mohammed stayed behind, where he witnessed his home being blown apart by the cyclone's powerful winds. <laughs> Although the Rohingya refugee camps in Bangladesh escaped the worst of the storm, some houses had their roofs blown off or were damaged. The UN Humanitarian Office said about 6 million people in the whole region were already in need of humanitarian assistance before the storm. Among them, 1.2 million people internally displaced by ethnic strife. And the intense heat wave condition in parts of western and northern India is making it difficult for people to carry out their daily activities. People are taking precautions like sipping on juices to stay hydrated. Heat wave conditions prevailing in parts of western and northern India caused difficulties, especially to those who have to work outside as temperatures continue to rise on Tuesday. People in western Rajkot city took precautions like sipping juices and drinking coconut water and used umbrellas to protect themselves from the sizzling heat. The Indian Meteorological Department observed maximum temperatures were in the range of 40 to 44 degrees Celsius over most parts of northwest, central and eastern India. Summers in India are a difficult time when soaring temperatures lead to numerous casualties. Possible reasons for the rising temperatures range from global warming to greater urbanization leading to taller buildings and diminishing green cover. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.